It is time for our exclusive weekly series, The News Nation Inflation Index, where we are tracking the most common products you buy, breaking down the numbers to show you how much prices are fluctuating in the top 10 states hit hardest by inflation over the past year. Here's a look at today's bread, milk, and egg prices. On average, bread nearly $4, milk $4.61, and eggs $3.82. Now compare that to a week ago. All three items have gone up in price. Bread up 37 cents this week. It's up 11% from a year ago. Milk also up 30 cents this week, but up 16% from last year. And Maryland is seeing the biggest increase on milk prices by $2.60. Meantime, eggs are up by only one cent, but they're up 33% from this time a year ago. Well, a major inflation report will be released this week that will impact your wallet. So joining us now is Kayla Bruhn, economic analyst with Morning Consult. Kayla, thank you for being with us. Thank you. So last week, we were focused on that jobs report and how that could contribute to a recession. This week, of course, all eyes on the consumer price index. What do you expect we'll see, Kayla? And will it hopefully, maybe or not be good news? I actually am expecting that the top line index could slow down a little bit, which would be good news on the surface. Uh, the reason I say that is really that gas prices, which have been a huge upward pressure on prices, those have come down from their peak in June. So month over month, that should offer some relief, at least in goods inflation. Um, and goods inflation overall has been slowing a bit the past few months. So it's possible that whole co component could slow a bit. Um, on the other hand, however, services prices have been trending higher and, and growing a little faster, which is actually the bigger part of the CPI. So that could be likely to continue just because some of the things that feed into services take a little longer to show up, things like higher wages and house prices. So it, they'll balance out a little bit, but the top line number could potentially come down because of that volatile energy component. Well, Kayla, something that, that's certainly been hard to predict always, uh, the stock market. So, so what do you think um, the impact will be on, on stock prices? We're in sort of a weird situation with the market right now where good news can be bad news and vice versa. And the reason for that is really the Fed and rate hikes. Um, so you're right, it's, it's tough to predict. Um, what I would say is that stronger than expected inflation, that's a worrying sign for the economy. It could increase uh, the likelihood that the Fed could take a more aggressive path to tame inflation. Uh, and then on the other hand, the, the fact that we had the jobs report last week that was pretty solid, that's actually sort of supportive of that notion that the Fed could raise rates faster. Um, if inflation does slow, however, that's that's a good sign for the economy and, and could possibly uh, take a little bit of pressure off the Fed. But there's still plenty of work to do because we really need to get back down closer to that 2% target. And even if it slows from 9% to 8%, there's, there's a lot left to do. Yeah, lots of work left to do. So, Kayla, last question for you. You know, we, you mentioned jobs, 528,000 added last month. That's almost double the expectation. Unemployment is down to its lowest level since before the pandemic. So what does this mean for a potential recession? And then, of course, those inflation numbers. So there's certainly a lot of good news in the jobs report we had last week. Uh, you mentioned the job gains were were a lot higher than expected and also higher than they've been trending in the past few months. Uh, wage growth also picked up a little bit. So that really is a positive sign for sort of the business outlook. Um, if firms are expecting that a really sharp recession is around the corner, they're probably not going to be expanding their employee base. Uh, so it's a positive sign for the business outlook. It's a positive sign also for consumer spending just by kind of that simple calculus that more workers earning wages then means more spending power for consumers. So that could help support spending. The one bit of bad news and sort of the negative take on it is that it's not so great for inflation. Uh, the labor force partic participation rate was still really low, um, kind of a persistent labor shortage is, is sort of what we're faced with. And that continues to put upward pressure on wages, which in turn feeds into inflation. Um, so that's sort of the the the, the negative side of the very otherwise very positive jobs report. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.